Hello, friends. I'm going to do my best to keep this week relatively condensed because there is so much to talk about. So if you want to talk more beyond what's just here, feel free to call me. But there's some big news, as you guys probably know. So let's get into it. What do we got? Well, tomorrow is St. Patty's Day. And so the first thing we'll start with is, what do you call Leprechaun's vacation home? Well, stay tuned. In a few slides, I'll tell you. Uh, for rates, guys, you've probably seen it. Rates were in the sevens. And then all of a sudden, last week, Silicon Valley Bank being the big one, the big news, all that nonsense we'll talk about in just a second. It has driven rates back down to the sixes. Uh, I still think later this year, we have a really good chance of them coming down to see them back to the fives again. So time will tell, but here's a, here's the chart. Guys, check it out. It's been a wild ride. Remember, green is good, red is bad. So it's it's a very wild ride just in the last, call it four or five trading days. Uh, for where we are. So here's what happened, right? So I'll do my best George Bailey impression. So it's a wonderful life, right? For those that don't know Silicon Valley Bank, the reason why they got in trouble is there was a run on the bank. So what's interesting is Dodd-Frank, when it came out, I don't even know how many years ago, it feels like 15 years ago after the mortgage meltdown, Dodd-Frank allows companies or banks to buy like long-term treasuries, like that's kind of what Silicon Valley Bank had, but they don't make them mark to market, meaning they don't say like, if today it's worth less, they don't have to put that on their balance sheet. They can say, as long as you keep this 30 year thing for all the 30 years, you get to treat it, pretend like on a book, on the books, that it's worth all of this money. Well, it's not. With what the Fed's been doing in the inverted yield curve lately, those, those assets are no longer worth, like I think it was like 80 billion. It's no longer worth 80 billion in today's dollars. So enough people did some digging and realized, hey, that 80 billion ain't worth 80 billion today. I better get my money out of the bank in case something happens. And then their friends hear about it. And then their friends hear about it. And everybody's going out and taking their money. And it's a run on the bank. So George Bailey is like, your money's tied up into Fred's house. And Fred, your money's in Martha's house, right? So that's my best George Bailey, by the way. Uh, but that's what happened in Silicon Valley Bank. Now, here's what's interesting. They practically doubled in 12 months. And from like April until like, I think December or January, they didn't even have a chief risk officer as a bank. So- I personally don't feel like this is systemic where it's the whole banking. I know that's a big concern. I feel like the Fed's going to step up and make sure everybody just calms the frick down <laughs> to make sure that we don't have a run on every single bank. Uh, the more time we put between Silicon Valley Bank and, and just, you know, every day that goes by, if there's not another bank collapse, that's a good thing. Uh, but that is why the stock market's getting hit. That's why there's a flight to quality, like mortgage-backed securities, and treasuries. And that's why we're seeing all those things happen. So here's something to note. Now I'm getting back to more like where we think rates are going and what's happening. The personal savings rate, look at this, that little red dotted line is where we are today. It is some of the lowest we've seen in decades, right? Even the 07, 08 time period, people had personal, a higher personal savings rate. You can see this spike during COVID. Remember when nobody can go anywhere and spend any money? Well, now they're spending the money, but it's more probably on inflation stuff, items that are now 10% more expensive than they were, or like eggs that have doubled. So I just look at that, guys. I mean, we're starting to save a little more, but holy smokes, like we are tapped out from a savings perspective and people are credit card debts, another graph, which uh, we're not going to show it today, but it's amazing how much more money they're throwing on here. So um, with that, you know, whether we're in recession or not to be determined, how long do they last? Again, guys, the average is nine months. Maybe we're already in it. Maybe we're not to be determined. But I just thought these are some interesting stats for what you can see how long recessions last. The average is about nine months. We'll see if we're in one. But here's the deal. People are like, house prices, we're waiting for them to come down. I don't think they will. I could be wrong. But guys, here's the deal. Check this out. This is the number of homes available to be bought from 1999 to 2023. Right now, we have less than 1 million homes for sale. Again, I'll say that again. Currently in America, less than a million homes for sale. Back in 2007, we had 4 million homes. So think about that. We had four times the amount of homes for sale back in the, the crash. And by the way, there's more people in America today buying homes than there were back then, right? So from a supply standpoint, there is none, very little. Okay, and then from a demand standpoint, it's still out there. And the stat I don't have here, but I saw... Uh, home, let's call it 20%, a little over, year over year down for like, I think it was new construction purchases or contracts. But the reality is like online searches, we're only down 8%. What does that tell you? It tells you that people still want to buy homes. They just can't or won't because of where rates are. So rates are coming down. We've already seen the uptick just this week in applications. So by the way, of that 980,000 homes, guess what, guys? 
about 400 of them aren't even available, right? Because they're still being built or they're already under contract. So it really only gives you about $578,000 homes to actually buy from, which is nuts. So look at this graph. There's just so few homes available compared to years past. Um, so here's the other part. When there's this few homes right now, supposedly, after you get this thick bottom, you're going to find that there could be an 8% appreciation, which is in line with kind of what we've seen as of late. But this was from 2012 to 2013 when there was 2.4 million homes available. So now that there's only 980, think what that's going to do for appreciation. So here's how to lie with statistics. I was just talking to my group about this. So I, I, I appreciate um, uh, Riley you going out and putting this in here. But the reality is, guys, for you see the headlines like, oh, prices are down 6% or, or, or down 5% or whatever it is, or we've lost these values, guys. The, the year over year was still up in appreciation. That's the fact that they don't tell you. Year over year, houses are still appreciating in most markets. It's still a really good market. Yes, there's some where that's not the case. But in most instances, houses are still appreciating. In fact, check this out. Since 1941, here's your home appreciation every year since 1942, technically, or 41 to 42. Look at all that stinking green. They've only had seven years where it wasn't a positive. One year was a tie. 1955, it was a tie. But everywhere else, and look at the negatives. Not that big a deal. Minus 1%, a 0% in 1991. The biggest there was was minus 12 in 2008. Then 09, 10, 11, still minus four, minus four, but green, 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 and lots of green. So homeownership is still amazing. I can understand people are saying, I'm waiting. Please you do, you do what feels right for you. But the reality is, is I just don't think you're going to see house prices come down. Now, it does bode the question of how can people afford it. I don't have a good answer for that. I think in hope rates will come down. We will find out. Here's some mortgage news, pretty boring, but it's real. If you bought a house uh, because of all this and the recent appreciation, Fannie Mae is now saying you have to wait 12 months before you take cash out. It used to be six. Now they're saying after you buy, you got to wait 12. So that's interesting. Um, I find it interesting. I told you a couple of weeks back that Fannie and, and Freddie are going to have like this more expensive hit for debt ratios now above 40%. They've now postponed that to August 1st. So if you got higher debt ratios, get those puppies closed before August 1st. Um, this is cool. If you haven't done it, Google it. New York Post, uh, T. Boone Pickens, his ranch, there was an $80 million price cut for $250 million is what it was initially listed for. It sold for, I think, $170 million. Go look it up. It is awesome. I don't know. I don't have 170 million, but if I did, I'd have bought it. It is that freaking cool. Go look at the pictures online. Um, I saw this this morning, it made me mad. So I just thought I'd include it. Some California uh, politician is pushing for a four day work week. Uh, I'm willing to bet she's never owned a business. I'm willing to bet she's never um, done what it takes to run a successful business and, and worked hard in the sense that the more hours you put in, typically the more successful you're going to be. So if you want me and my employees and now work four days a week, it just means they think it's going to mean I don't have to hire more people. I'm just telling you, it's just nuts. I threw it in there. I know this can be polarizing. You tell me your thoughts, but she wants people to have more time to spend with their families. Well, okay, but if you don't have any money, what are you going to do? Because you're only working four days instead of five days. So there you go. And guys, what do you call a leprechaun's vacation home? A leprechando. <laughs> That's terrible. Happy St. Pat's Day. Guys, remember to get social, subscribe, share all that fun stuff, the little QR code. I'm sure it takes you somewhere fun. And pay attention, guys. We're doing Mark Madness. I like this. I didn't come up with it. Uh, Mark Madness, I, it's, you know, I'm sure in this, I'm not paying attention. That's okay. If you are, good for you. Hope you fill out lots of brackets. We'd love for you guys to participate in Mark Madness. So go on social, follow us. There's some giveaways. And the goal here, this is what my marketing person says. She tries to make it to where people go feral over what's given away. So you let us know. We appreciate you as always. Hope you guys have a great day, great St. Patty's Day weekend, and be safe. Bye, guys.